Now, we've done a very good job of explaining a block is sliding along this way, runs into this object, one bounces backwards, other goes this way, or whatever combination we have thereof. But anybody who's done any experimenting, say, with a pool table, knows that if you take a ball and you hit a ball not square, then one ball will take off, say, this way, and this ball might go that way. And that leads to a question. Is, first of all, momentum conserved? Chris, is momentum still conserved in that case? Has to be its universal law. Now, the question is, how is it conserved? And the thought experiment we're going to throw at you is as follows. Let's turn this experiment just a little bit. Now, I'm going to have this ball going this way. I'm going to have it going 30 degrees. You guys just, we'll make this 10 meters per second. And I'm going to place a ball in its path right here. But I'm not going to view this as you normally would. I'm going to put a camera, just like they do on ESPN, I'm going to put a camera, and I'm going to have the camera going 5 meters per second this way to watch this experiment. So it's watching the ball go across the table, but it's sliding along straight downwards. Greco, give me any idea why I picked 5 meters per second. Because you still see, like, it still looks like the ball's moving. Explain that a little bit more. Um, oh, so the ball stays in the center of the shot. The ball is in the center of the shot. In other words, according to this reference frame, which the flea is sitting on top of the camera, according to the flea's reference frame, this ball is actually doing what? Going straight ahead at 8.66 meters per second. Does a flea have a right to its own reference frame? Yeah. Since it does, it would see the experiment in exactly the same way. And momentum must be conserved just like we've been doing it, right? And so he would simply go momentum before equals momentum after. He would go MV. Being flat, fleas are extremely good at physics. MV1 plus the second M, let's send the mass of the same, it doesn't really matter for our first argument. MV2, right? Isn't this what we're already doing? Now notice, let's go back to the non flea point of view. The non flea point of view, if I'm looking from overhead, what did we just do? We broke it into components. So since this must work, then momentum is not only conserved, but it must be conserved in the x direction and y direction by definition. And so the way we're going to approach momentum problems in two dimensions is we're going to conserve it in the x direction, then we're going to conserve it in the y direction. Does that make sense? Let's see what we got. Have we got that? Is that an idea? Concept, sort of. Okay. Then after that, it's just ugly math. So let's do some ugly math. The first example is I have a three kilogram blue block. Three kilogram blue block. It's sliding along a frictionless surface with a velocity of 33.33 meters per second east. It collides with a red block. That is a red block, which is uh, 2.00 kilograms. And it is, oh, let's make it red. Why not? I don't have red anymore, so I'm going to make it orange. Why did you red? I don't know. It's changing my colors on me for reasons I don't really understand. Yeah. 25 yeah. meters per second. After the collision, we know the red block. Is the red block? Nope, we got the blue block. The blue block is going to go due south at 20 meters per second. What would happen to the red block? Generally speaking, Mr. Nix, what would happen to the red block? <laughs> we look at the momentum before. This is 3 times 33, so about 100. 
This is about 2 times 25, so that's about 50. Generally speaking, it's going to go to the right, because that one didn't suck up any momentum at all. And because this went down, I need the net momentum over here to be zero, right? Because that's zero in the y direction to begin with. It's going to go up, right? North. Does that make sense? So generally speaking, it's going to go this way. Now, even if you don't know that, even if you don't recognize that, <coughs> we're going to approach the problem the exact same way. We're going to say it has a velocity in this direction, bx, a velocity in this direction, by. And please notice the following. If I do that, what happens if I get it wrong? Just going to get a negative number, which means it's going to the left or it's going south. Make sense? You're doing really right. It's going to do that for me. Okay? So, you want to do x direction or y direction first? Next. Um, let's do uh, x direction. So, in the x direction, I have momentum before equals momentum after. Momentum before would be? What? I got that moving, that moving, lots of things moving. So I got 3 times 33.33 minus, I'm oh, sorry, plus 2 times negative 25, right? Equals, what's the momentum of this in the x direction? That's zero, right? What's the momentum of this one in the x direction? What's what I saw for, but it's going to be 2.0 times v x thank you please thank you make that x vx make sense so i can solve for what vx do some math over here i get 50 equals 2.0 vx vx equals 25 meters per second wait how did you get 50 never mind never mind i got you I mean, so far, I'm going to pause there. We're good. Right? And then I divide 24.99? Yeah. Okay, I'm rounding too much. I'm sorry. Good deal, though. Perfect, perfect. We good? Yeah, because that's only this piece, isn't it? So now I'm going to do the y direction. What's the y direction? What's my momentum before or next? In the up down direction, the very first part of the problem, what do I got for a y direction? Momentum. How much does this one go in the y direction? No, it doesn't go. Initially, at the beginning of the problem. Zero. Zero. How much about the second one? Zero. At the initial start of the problem. Zero. Afterwards, how much does this go in the y direction? I would say three times. Negative 20, thank you. And then this would be 2 times velocity in the y direction. Does that make sense? Okay, so then I'm going to do a little math. I got uh, negative 60. That's a terrible negative 60. 0 plus 2y, 2by. Move the 60 over, get 60 equals 2y. 2 velocity in the y direction. Velocity in the y direction equals 30 meters per second. Now, is that the answer I'm going to ask you for? No, because we don't ask, what are the components of the velocity of a particle? We want to know which way does it go and how fast. So what would I do? I would redraw. So I have velocity in this direction, it's 25. Velocity in this direction, which is 30. Make sense so far? Draw my big arrow. How do I solve for the magnitude of it? Solve for C. So I would go 30 squared. 30 squared plus 25 squared equals the velocity squared. 30 squared. One square button. God, I hate TX. Plus 25 up to 2 to the 0.5. So prosperity too. Don't share with it. Don't share that recording. What? Did I get it wrong? No, you're right. There's the square button right there. I know. No, no. It's always on the left side. It's supposed to be on the right hand side. No problem. The problem. Yeah. No, they they they, they make a fine count. So is that our?
my story figures. No, that is how fast it's going. Now, how do I get to direction? Set theta equal to this. Tangent, you asked earlier, do I care about direction? On the previous problem, not so much. On this one, absolutely. So then it's going to be at, to find the angle, I go tangent of theta equals 30 divided by 25. Therefore, the arc tan of six fifths, put in my calculator, what do you get? 50.2. And which way do I write it? North of east. Oh, yeah. It's all coming back. Roaring into play. It's going to be lovely, everybody.